Hi, my name's Michael O'Hare. I'm an ex-CEO, philanthropist, all-round life coach, and the author and founder of the worldwide acclaimed Best in Business Seminars. Here are my top 10 tips for the best business presentation. Have you ever been to a business presentation? I've been to many over the years of my illustrious career, and I have to say that almost all of them failed to capture my imagination, being ill-prepared, lacking in substance, or simply having an unattractive presenter. By contrast, my presentations are world-renowned by those who attended my best-in-business seminars, and they all say one thing about them, the best. They engage, they inspire, and they arouse audience members. If you want to have those same type of presentations, then follow my top 10 tips for the best in business presentation. Number one, text, text, and more text. When I first started in business, we didn't have fancy computer software. No, Instead, we had chalkboards and overhead projectors on which to write our wisdom for those who sought it. However, since the advent of computer software for presentations, more and more presenters have felt obliged to do overt, grotesque visual representations. That said, there is still a place for a slide that is packed full of words. It says to any potential audience member, hey, there's a lot of words on that slide. That guy must know a lot of information. Here are some examples of which you can use text in your slides for your best in business presentation. This example shows how impressive the use of voluminous text can be. I've even reduced the size of it just to squeeze more in. When I first used this slide, some of the attendees from my best in business seminars had to leave due to dizziness. They simply hadn't scaled such heights before. In this example, I filled up the space even more by changing the direction of some text. Look at how the different lines of text pull in the audience. After showing this slide at one of my best in business presentations, an audience member came up to me afterwards and said they found it revolutionary. They never thought text could be read in different directions. I told them the Arabic world had been doing it for centuries. And this final example, I have put text in boxes to give emphasis to each part. I call it toxting. Still more text, but in boxes. Many of the thousands of individuals who have attended my best in business seminars told me that toxting completely changed the way that they present, enhancing their careers tenfold. Adding text to any business presentation is a good start, but adding lots of text is the way to winning the hearts of your audience and the minds of your clients and colleagues. Remember, more is more. Number two, the use of charts. If you can't write it, chart it. That's one of my top phrases from my best in business presentations that some of my attendees are now using too. Sometimes in a presentation, I just like to put a chart up on a slide and just stand back. The silence that follows it makes my body hair stand on end. Platinum. Everybody in that auditorium knows they have just seen something very special. But how can anyone do this? Well, with the right computer software, the limit is your imagination. This first chart is what I use at every single one of my best in business seminars and the effect it has on audience members has been unforgettable. These are known as multiple line graphs. Individuals have told me time and again that they identify with them as though the lines represent their own career trajectories, challenging at times, but ultimately on the up. And the different line colors? Well, they represent all the different best-in-business seminar attendees. 
Anyone can be the best in business, regardless of color. This highly successful slides combines data and charts and has a pedigree of being a guaranteed winner. The sublime combination of numbers with artwork have been scientifically proven to heighten the senses of audience members by an average of 47%. This chart brings together art and science, breaking presentational boundaries with its colors and values. It encourages the audience to admire and appreciate the form of the individual bars from an aesthetic perspective before providing a mathematical statement of fact with its unequivocal yet satisfying numbers. Finally, as I've stated many times before, more is more. And this slide is the epitome of that. The more charts you put into your presentation, the more confidence you give to your audience that you are the best in business. Look at all the competing colors and shapes, hues and forms, conveying complex information in a graphical representation. This slide will portray any individual as an expert of highly technical information, whilst at the same time being the consummate artiste. This is the slide that Leonardo da Vinci would have presented. The use of charts and slides defines both point in time and future corporate trajectories for both clients and colleagues. The more colors you use and the more charts you use, the more your presentation will resonate as the best in business presentation. Number three, the use of animated graphics. People have been giving business presentations since the time of Socrates. Initially, they would have been freestyling, i.e. simply vocal, before moving on to chalk and stone tablets. Now, in the new age of computer software, a business can move into the 22nd century via the use of appropriate animated graphics. Take this slide. Pretty standard, right? But no, look. A surprise animation. No audience member will be expecting that. Not only will it cause some individuals to laugh, it will cause others to be absolutely astounded, particularly those who have never used a personal computer for business use before. And look what follows the animation. Some good news. Sales are projected to rocket. This slide uses a more fluid approach. Individuals at my best in business seminars told me that the constant movement of graphics made them feel as though they were part of a business journey, constantly evolving along the corporate trajectory. Once I showed them that they too could use this animation for their business, they became part of the best in business family. The use of animated graphics in any business presentation is a surefire way to bring your presentation to the forefront of global business communication. I encourage you all to use animated graphics in your business presentation. It will turn an average presentation into the best in business presentation. Number four, be interactive. I've been to many presentations over the years of my illustrious career that completely sucked the life out of me. Not because the slides were bad, but because the presenter didn't interact with the audience. They didn't make the audience feel they were engaged in a journey and experience with them. The best presenters interact with their audience. But Michael, I hear you cry, how can we do this? Many of the attendees who have attended my best in business presentation seminars always tell me that they feel nervous. They feel like they're going into uncharted territory with a question that they might not be able to answer from the audience. Well, here are my top ideas for suggestions that you can use in your presentations that will help you interact with your audience. Where have you come from today?
Who here wants to make more money? Who here wants to be a successful black woman in business? How many people here today are in love with their company? Who here wants to strip their boss naked and send them out to get their own damn dry cleaning? Who here wants to make their business ideas accessible even to wheelchair users? All of these questions have one thing in common, the audience. And all of these questions will get them unanimously saying the same thing. Yes. And it makes sense. They want to be the best in business too. So get interactive with your audience. Number five, use of the space. Many of the seminarians who attended my best in business classes get too fixated with standing and presenting their work, rooted to the spot, hiding behind the lectern. The best in business presenters don't get constrained to one area. They use the whole space that's been given to them, pushing the boundaries between themselves and the audience so that it becomes seamless. As you can see from my movement in this example, it's not just back and forth. It's four-dimensional. Left and right, forward and back, up and down. And that's just the basics. When you've reached the advanced movement stage, you can combine the different dimensions as can be seen here. Thousands of individuals who have attended my best in business seminars have told me that I was the best order they had ever witnessed, saying that my nuanced body movements helped them feel alive and in the present making them feel part of one giant, moving, sensual body. Make use of that body. Make use of the space. Number six, recap slides. One of the best presentations I ever gave was over 200 slides long, and every single slide contained a vital piece of information, a jewel of a fact, and every slide was engaging. But how do you make sure that your audience members go away with that information, with those key takeaways? The answer? Recap. Tell them the information again, and again, and again. The use of recaps is an old school technique widely used across the globe, and that is the reason why I've included it in the best in business presentation top 10 tips. So what is a recap? It's a toll booth, it's a toll gate, it's a roadblock, it's a checkpoint, placed periodically throughout your presentation as a reminder point of all the information you've covered so far. So when do I put in my roadblock, my checkpoint, my toll booth, my toll gate, Michael? Well, every single time you present an important piece of information, it's imperative that you place your recap point after that information. So in the case of my slides, where every slide conveys an important piece of information, I put the recap after that slide. Here's an example. Slide one, welcome and introduction to Michael O'Hare. Slide two, recap. Slide three, outline of the presentation. Slide 4. Recap. Slide 5. House rules before the presentation starts. Slide 6. Recap. Slide 7. Acknowledgements. Slide 8. Recap. Slide 9. Small break and time for some initial questions. Slide 10. Recap. And so forth. Constantly reminding people of your key messages via the use of recaps will help ingrain your message into your audience's psyche. You can never have too many recaps. Remember, more is more. Number seven, slow, enunciate, project. 
Being an excellent presenter isn't just about having excellent slides. It's about being an orator, an expert in speech, a best-in-business communicator. Before your audience have even interpreted your message, first and foremost, they have to hear your message. In one of the excerpts from my first autobiography, I write, Every word has a meaning, even the. Every word needs to be heard, and there are several ways that the best in business candidate can do that. Here are the most successful techniques that I have used throughout my glittering career. Slow speaking. Always speak slowly, as though speaking to an individual with learning difficulties or for whom English is not their first language. Who likes money? Does anybody here want a fast-paced, quick-moving, non-stop action roller coaster career? For those that urgently need it now, the bathroom is down the corridor, through the double doors, first left, left again, then past the reception desk, and the second on the right. Annunciation. Annunciation is a major element in the successful orator's toolkit. If you don't do it correctly, your eager audience will hear sound, but not the words. To help with it, imagine the shape your mouth would make if you were eating something particularly unpleasant. Maybe some foreign cuisine, or some flavorless piece of gum. And then try saying the following examples that have served me well. Never patronize your audience. They're smart too. Best in business busted my rear. Best in business enhanced my career. Anyone can enunciate easily except those without a full set of teeth. Projection. Sometimes, when a microphone or loudspeaker are not available, presenters can forget that audience members in the cheapest seats at the back of the auditorium cannot always hear what is being said. I remember attending a corporate strategy presentation for three hours once, only to realize at the end it was about getting more gay men into finance. It's important that every single one of your audience can hear your message, and the best way of ensuring this occurs is projecting your voice. Here are some excellent quotes that I have used in presentations over the years that serve as great examples for voice projection. Should a fire break out during this presentation, please use the exits at the back unless the fire is also at the back. It's nice to see some older audience members here today. I said, it's nice to see some older audience members here today. There's no need to project your voice when somebody is only one foot away from your face. Speaking slowly, enunciation, and projection are key attributes of the best in business presenter's arsenal. How can people heed your message if they can't hear your message? Bathrooms and fire exits. It's important that the consummate best in business presenter highlights what to do in the event of an emergency. I'm talking about if there's a fire or an urgent need to use the bathroom clearly outlining where the exits are at the start of your presentation will allow people to feel relaxed, letting them know there's a responsible adult here to lead, i.e. you. Never underestimate the frequency at which someone beyond the age of 40 can visit the bathroom. It is staggering. 
Some participants of your best in business seminar will already have visited the bathroom probably two or three times before your presentation begins. Others, however, will wait until your presentation has started. Just like those individuals who wait for a plane just to take off before they take their buckle off, squeeze past you and make their way to the bathroom. Furthermore, it is really important that you highlight exactly where the male and female bathrooms are. An individual was recently apprehended at one of my best in business presentations for urinating in the wrong bathroom. They cited that they were desperate to go. There was no closer bathroom. And of course, equality. Well, eventually, the police were called and the woman was arrested. Outlining the house rules at the start of any best in business presentation is almost as important as the substance itself. As Chief Scout Baden Powell once said, fail to be prepared, be prepared to fail. Number nine, your presentation is an adventure. So how do you open your best in business presentation? Well, I use some classic opening lines to stories that my mother used to read to me when I was just a young Michael O'Hare. Once upon a time, in a time long before laptops, when the first electric typewriter had just been conceived, some apes evolved into Neanderthals. Some Neanderthals evolved into Homo sapiens. Some Homo sapiens evolved into human beings. And some human beings became the best in business. Notice how the build-up has the audience already at the edge of their seat. It's intriguing. It's a thriller. It's a suspense. Use these opening lines and the build-up that I have just used into your best in business presentations and bring your audience on a best in business journey. In the beginning, there was darkness. Nothing for six days. On the seventh day, God said, let there be light. On the eighth day, Michael O'Hare said, let there be a best in business. Every best in business presentation is a journey the audience must feel part of. They must feel engaged in and an active participant in your adventure. Has your company recently had an obstacle to overcome? Any dangerous situations that ever could, or any inappropriate romantic liaisons taking place in the office. Either way, incorporate it into your best in business presentation. Has the company taken a dip in the third quarter results? It's a thrill of suspense. Will the company make up results at the end of the year? Has your company recently upgraded its internet software? Perhaps this is a, an espionage humdinger. Maybe there's a communist hacker involved. Or has your company recently been trying to be taken over by your ex-wife's family? Sounds like a mafia conspiracy story, doesn't it? Either way, these kind of storylines need to be embedded in your best in business presentation. Number 10. Timing of your presentation. The best in business presenters always make sure they run out of time at the end of their presentations to answer questions. Some of the best presenters I have ever seen presented wonderful slides, excellent presentations, only to be undone at the end by an unexpected and aggressive question. Always make sure you have gauged the longevity of your presentations, how long it will take you to walk through each slide, how long you'll need for an interval, how long you'll need for breaks, including bathroom breaks for excessive users. The trick is to always make sure you are interested in answering questions but unfortunately, you've run out of time. Some of the best techniques that I have used over the years include Checking your watch intermittently Periodically checking the back of the auditorium appearing to take a signal from a member of event staff. 
pulling your phone from your pocket as though a timer has gone off. All of these techniques are designed not to deceive, but to succeed. I always encourage all my best in business attendees to make sure they use the timing technique too. It's the best way of signing off your best in business presentation. My top 10 tips for the best in business presentation will leave your audience fully mesmerized, fully bore into your message, and fully believing that you are the expert corporate communicator. Good luck with that best in business presentation.